Hi YouTube, my name is Jürgen and I'm from ProHerper. I've been absent from YouTube for quite some time now and the reason for that is quite clear. I've been working very hard behind the scenes trying to develop some new tests to test the genetics of your ball pythons. And at the same time, of course, I've also still breeding snakes and some amazing ball pythons are hatching as we speak. I will do some follow-up videos on that. But today we're going to talk about these genetic tests. People in the US have been working already very hard and very long trying to identify the mutations of ball pythons, for example, for the albino gene. Um, and so right now I'm also setting up these tests here in Europe so that we European breeders can also do this. So how do these tests work and which one uh, do we have currently available for you guys? Um, let's find out. Here we go. We currently have three types of tests available. One is for the albino gene. And so the albino gene, I'm just going to call it, the actual name is a little bit different, but for the albino gene, you can test whether or not a snake is hut for albino or the snake is hut for candy or toffee. Candy and toffee are actually exactly the same morph, genetically speaking, uh, have the, exactly the same mutation. Um, so we cannot differentiate between those two because actually it's just the same, but we can discriminate between an albino and a toffee or um, a candy. What we can also do is check if your animal is a candino, a candy or an albino. So even if you have visual animals, we can still determine um, the difference between them and we can find out what the exact genetics are. So this is great for everyone working with the candy project and mixing it with albinos. So you don't really have to wait for, let's say sometimes up to a year or maybe six, to six months or so, just to find out whether or not you hit a candy or a candino, right? So um, I think this is really going to move the, the candy project forward as well, because I think a lot of people stopped breeding with candy because of this reason. So now it's clear from the start if you use this genetic test. The second test is a hut pie test, where again, you can just test if your animal is hut for pied. So if you have, for example, a 66% possible hut or a 50% possible hut, or even just an animal where you hope that it will be hut pied, because I don't know, it has some tail tracks or whatever, you can just send us a chat. I will explain to you in a minute how this works. You, ju you just send us a chat and then I can test it for you. And then the third test is uh, a test for lavender albino. And again, here the same thing, you can test whether or not these animals are hut for lavender albino, yes or no. We actually have a fourth test uh, that we're currently working on. It's not really available as of right now, uh, but that's the ultramel test uh, and the caramel albino test. So we're still trying to validate that, um, but hopefully soon we can also offer it to you guys as well. Other tests are also in development. I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now. Uh, a lot of people have already asked me about Desert Ghost, Clown, Puzzle stuff. Unfortunately, it will not be for right now. Um, this is something that maybe in the distant future, hopefully next year, maybe even later, uh, we would be able to offer this to you guys. Um, but I think this is already a nice step forward and it's really going to change the way we breed these animals and really going to change the hobby in general. So how do we actually perform the test? Well, I'm a scientist, so I'm educated and I actually have a PhD in molecular cell biology, meaning I know everything about genetics. Maybe not everything, but quite a lot, I would say. Anyway, so I'm perfectly qualified to do the test myself. And for this, I also have a collaboration with one of the universities here in Flanders, here in Belgium. And so, the idea is that you send us a shed, I take the shed and I isolate the DNA from the shed. What happens then is I check and I read the sequence of the DNA. So basically DNA is, you can compare it with a sentence basically, a very long book full of sentences actually. 
and we will look at a certain specific part of that DNA which we know is linked, for example, for albino, which is linked to the albino morph, right, as we know it. And I can then check whether or not there is this mutation present which is linked to the albino phenotype. Phenotype refers to the color morph as we know it in a hobby. So basically, I just isolate, very simply put, I just isolate the DNA and then I amplify it using a polymerase chain reaction. It's a very difficult word to just say, I multiply it and then I can read it. And by reading it, I can check which mutation is present and then I also know, is this a candy, is this an albino or is this just a normal that is not carrying any of these genes. I do the same thing for lavender albino and I do the same thing also for pied. So that's how I perform the tests. Now, what do you need to do if you want to perform a test? First of all, what you need is you need a snake shed. We use the sheds and we use them to isolate the DNA. So I have one right here. This is a shed and what is very, very important is that it's completely dry. If the shed has been laying in whatever filth, I don't know, um, and has been wet for quite a time, it will be extremely problematic, okay? The DNA degrades very fast and basically I cannot isolate enough DNA and I cannot perform the test, so the test will just fail. Make sure you always take a dry and a clean shed. So this is an example. As you can see, um, there are still some pieces of cocoa. It's not a problem as long as it's clean, as long as it's dry, okay? This is an entire shed. I don't need an entire shed. If you can give me an entire shed, it's okay, but you don't have to. What I need is it needs to be at least the palm size, uh, the size of the, the palm of your hand, okay? That's what I need. Needs to be clean, needs to be dry. So very important, those two aspects. Then what you do is you take a piece of paper and you write down a few things. First, you write down your name. This can be your name or your business name, whatever name you prefer. Second, I need your email address. This is how I will contact you. This is how, first of all, I will send you the invoice, how you should pay for the test. But also afterwards, I will send you a genetic certificate, basically, of your snake. Then I need a snake ID. I need to know for which snake I am testing this so that you also can know for which snake, of course, you did the test. I can imagine that a lot of people will just start sending me five different sheds um, and maybe they don't uh, even remember which one was from which snake. Then of course the test is worthless because you have five animals and three of them will be, for example, hut for pied, but you still don't know which ones, right? So you need to have the ID as well. Then finally, the morph. Uh, I need to know which morph it is. And then finally, the test you want to perform. You can do multiple tests on one shed. So you can, for example, test if the animal is hut pied and you can also test if the animal is hut lavender albino, right? If you have, for example, double hut dream sickle pairing, uh, you hatch some normals, you can check. They should be 66% possible double hut. Uh, you can check whether or not these are hut lavender albino and you can also check if they are hut for pied. Then what you do is you take the shed, you take the piece of paper and you put it in a Ziploc bag. So you can find them almost everywhere. Uh, Ikea also sells them, for example. You put it in together and again snake shed has to be dry uh, you clean it and then basically you can just put it in an envelope you write my address i will link it in the description you can write my red address there um, put it in an envelope and this is how you can send it okay right now of course this is very big again i don't need the entire shed if it's just the size the palm of your hand size it's perfect you can send it to me afterwards I will send you an invoice for the payment and that's how we do the testing. You will receive the results approximately, it depends, between two to four weeks later, okay? It depends on how busy we are, it depends on how many people want to do the shedding tests, uh, how many people want to do the, the tests. If more people are interested, for example, right now it's breeding season, more people will be interested and I will do, I will perform more tests right now as when, for example, in winter there will not be as many tests. Uh, being done okay so how much will everything cost which is of course also important the price of one shed uh, being tested is 35 euros if you want to have more than 10 tests 
the price drops to 30 euros per test. If you want to have more than 50 tests, so if you have a large collection, uh, the price drops to uh, 25 euros per test. If you want to do a second test on the same animal, so for example, you test for hut pied and then you also test for hut lavender albino, uh, the second test is always 25 euros. And then um, the thing is, so ball pythons are listed as sites animals, right? So this is a very important international convention um, which protects all the different animal species that we have and ball pythons are also listed as such. This means that within Europe you can just freely send me some sheds but if you're in the UK we need to have the permits, okay? For this I'm working together with people and it will be slightly more expensive um, so we're talking about an additional 10 uh, pounds per test that we want to perform just to get the sheds here uh, so that you can sh send them to me uh, in a perfectly legal way, basically. Um, that's it. Uh, if you have more questions, just shoot me a PM or let me know here in the comments. I'm always open for other suggestions as well. If there are people that are interested in maybe other animals, I don't know, corn snakes, boas, whatever, and you have certain mutations that you want to check, you can always contact me. I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no. But I'm always uh, happy to hear you out and if there is a lot of interest for a certain specific test, for example in boas or corn snakes, whatever, um, I can always look into it and try to develop it in the near future. Okay, thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Goodbye!